So these are my neighbor's trees and I'm going to cut them down. Okay, okay, okay. Bear with me for just a second here. I know you're feeling a lot of things. I know you're maybe angry, confused, wondering what the heck I am thinking. And I won't disagree with any of those feelings. In fact, I felt some of those things myself too. But before you go write that angry comment, let me explain to you exactly what's happening here because this has been a long time in the making. So this is the front of our house, which means that these trees over here block a good amount of the sunlight that comes into this now. That was not the case when we moved into this house 20 years ago. So although having enough light in our house sort of started this whole process, this turned out to be about a lot more than just light. So these trees, at least the arborvitaes here, were planted sometime between 1970 and 1980 by the people who owned the property next door at the time. Now we know that because we've gone back through the county maps, which include aerial photographs every decade. And so in 1970, they weren't there. And in 1980, they were there. And undoubtedly, they were planted as a screening hedge by the people who owned that property. Now, over the years, these trees did what trees do, which is grow. And by the way, evergreens do not stop growing. Sometimes they slow down, but they don't stop growing. When we moved into our house 20 years ago, although there was no screening at the bottom, which we'll talk about in a second, these were probably... I mean, conservatively, maybe 30 feet tall, which was doable. We put in a full sun garden. We enjoyed great light through our windows, which was hugely important to us. We are uh, people who thrive on light. And honestly, if it had been dark in this house, we wouldn't have bought this house. So those trees were about probably 30 feet at that time, maybe even, maybe even a little less than that. And then we watched them keep growing. And when the new neighbors next door moved in maybe eight or nine years ago, we proposed to them to do have an arborist come and prune the tops of them a little bit just to control their height a little bit. And they didn't care for that. And that's completely fine. They are their trees and they didn't really want anything that even remotely approached a sort of formal look. They were concerned about the health of the trees. Um, it wasn't something they wanted to do, which was a okay with us. So fast forward to today. These trees are now 55 feet tall. They lose a lot of branches. There's a few that are leaning. I think they're probably in fairly okay health for the age of these trees. Um, they're not perfect, no tree is. But we have really noticed the lack of light that we're getting these days. In particular, in winter, very little light in our house because with the sun low in the sky, it's really blocked. Um, but even in summer, we're starting to notice problems to the point where I was looking at potentially having to change out this garden over here, which is probably the garden that you see the most here on our property, um, having to start in the next couple of years to transition that garden, more than transition, to fully change that garden over to a shade, to part shade on the front edge of it bed uh, because of that. And that's not the only problem because this is supposed to be a screening hedge and yet the foliage starts at somewhere in the eight foot tall range, meaning it doesn't screen anything practically unless you're upstairs. So I'm not going to get into the litany of reasons of why we're going to do what we're going to do here, except to say that if you're thinking we should just put a fence up, I will just tell you for various reasons that is not an option. So over winter, I drew up this. This is a plan to remove all of those trees and replace them with a mixed privacy screen. So unbeknownst to us, the neighbors have been thinking about this problem too, because they have big plans next door. So this cute little cottage that you see through here is moving to about there. And their house is getting a large extension and a swimming pool and outdoor entertainment area is going in. So if I have my measurements more or less correct, that new cottage is going to end up somewhere around here, basically right off our back steps, um, off our deck, which means that this project became more about screening than about any sort of light situation. And it just reinforced the idea that what we have here now would not work at all. Now, listen, I understand that some of you are not going to be happy with this tree situation and that we're taking these trees down. I respect that opinion and I fully understand that opinion. Uh, but 
I want you to know that this is not something that the neighbors who own those trees or Mr. Much More Patient and I take lightly. We've put a lot of thought into it. And what we think is that we can replace these trees with something that will have in time, I understand not immediately, but in time will have a greater ecological benefit. Um, and frankly, there is some work that would have to be done to these trees on the neighbor side of things to facilitate some of the construction they're doing that will require cutting off a lot of the foliage on that side of the trees. So there would be compromises anyway. But for the reasons that I've mentioned here already, in particular in our case for light and now for screening since there is you know, an entire entertainment area happening over there that is facing us, uh, that we all want proper screening from, us and the neighbors. Um, it's something that we feel has to be done. So let's move on from the bad parts of that and let's talk about what this screen is gonna look like. So I've mentioned that this is going to be a mixed privacy hedge. So what does that mean? That means evergreens, deciduous trees, and shrubs. Uh, possibly some perennial ground cover in the future. Not at all something I am planning for at this point. That can happen later uh, should it be needed. So there are many reasons why we're not just going to plant a row of evergreens and call it a day. One, like evergreen choices are a big question here because I think you can see what happens behind me here when deer are involved. This is Thuya, I think Occidentalis. It might be Placata, which is supposed to be a little bit more deer resistant. Uh, it doesn't matter because when these were planted, uh, the deer population in this area was nothing like it is now. So I'm sure these grew to the ground for many years, but the deer population in this area has absolutely exploded. I personally don't feel like it's being very well managed. Uh, and this is what happens. You can't grow these trees here. On top of that, there is a formality that comes with a straight hedge of the same thing that we don't think really is appropriate for this area. Um, this is a natural area. Um, you can see there are trees that grow all over the place here. Um, we have kind of an, an uh, unmanaged wooded area. There's lots of those around here. This is a pretty natural rural area here. So putting a big formal hedge that has no business here whatsoever. It also doesn't match with the landscape that the neighbor's planning or our landscape. On top of that, I don't think that single species hedges or privacy screens are a good idea to begin with because if the emerald ash borer has taught us anything, it's that one insect can come in and wipe out everything. And then lastly, I think that a mixed privacy screen has far more ecological benefits in addition to far more interest and I think it's a better investment to begin with. So here is the new plan that we've come up with. Underneath here is a portion of our neighbor's drawing for what they're going to do over there. And he gave us a scale drawing. Uh, it helps that he's an architect. He gave us a scale drawing of this part of the property so that we could line everything up. And one of the things that they're planning here is some parking. So right along here, they're going to move their driveway over a little bit, but they are going to put in some angle parking in there because they like to have big parties. They like to have you know, entertain a lot of people at once and they want somewhere for those people to park. So now that we knew that there was going to be this angle parking, a pool that we want to screen, a cottage that's going to look right in here, uh, we had to change up the plan a little bit to uh, intentionally place taller things uh, while keeping lower things that will be lower to the ground uh, along the entire way, but not provide just a ton of shade because of course this all started with us wanting to get away from the shade. Now this is the part where I give a big shout out to my friend Yulia from Y Garden uh, who is a garden designer and by the way has a fabulous YouTube channel that I hope you guys follow. I reached out to Yulia because this is exactly the kind of thing that Yulia does. I have seen Yulia's designs in people's uh, landscapes and she's an expert at bringing together these plants of um, some natives and non-natives and different textures and different purposes. And so I reached out to Yulia and I said, can I bounce ideas off of you? Can I send you some ideas and can I bounce them off of you um, so that I know that we're going to do this right. And Yulia has been just an incredible help during this whole process. Um, in particular, uh, very gently 
guiding some of my decisions. So I actually ended up adding in more evergreen varieties than I had originally intended to. But once we found out what was happening next door, we needed very specific screening type trees. So let me just walk you through what we chose here. So sort of starting from our garage basically and working our way we're going as far as there's a maple tree over here now we're probably going to continue some of this past that but i'm actually not designing for that because the way our properties are angled is that beyond that maple tree anything we'd plant would be strictly on our property so it's not like i need to talk to the neighbors about what we're going to do over there everything here about about 70% uh, of what we're planting here will end up on the neighbor's property so Obviously, I'm sharing these plans with them. They're approving them. We're doing everything involved in it, but obviously it's their property. They need to be in the loop uh, and in agreement with what's happening here. So starting from our garage, we're gonna have an Eastern Hemlock. Now, this is a tree that Yulia encouraged me to put in from the very beginning. And then suddenly it became really the only tree that would work in that area because there's a ton of trees still left on their property. They have a lot of evergreens, in particular down on the end by our garage. So an evergreen that grows in shade, not very many of those, Not, and I'm not saying shade, but like mostly shade, not a lot of those. Um, so that's the big thing that a hemlock has going for. In addition to that, a hemlock is an absolutely gorgeous tree. I think it should do really well. It's also going to be a little bit wider. It'll be good because down in this corner, that's where we're going to need screening from the pool because the pool is going to be kind of angled in such a way that if we're sitting on our deck without that tree there, we would look right into, right into their, where they're planning to do a pool. A quick note on hemlocks, some of you might be going, uh, what about woolly adelgids, which is a, everybody who, if you live in the East Coast, you probably know all about woolly adelgids because they are wiping out hemlock populations. People are trying really hard to save the great hemlock forests. We do not have woolly adelgid here in Wisconsin. They do have it in Michigan, so I imagine it's just a matter of time before it comes here. However, planting one hemlock is not likely to bring in an abundance of woolly adelgids which look like little, tiny little like cotton balls on the back side of, um, on the underside of needles. I don't think with one hemlock, uh, they'll be like, they'll find it here as long as that tree is healthy. Now, if that tree is stressed, they'll find it probably. But so it'll be really important and that's a very shallow rooted tree. So it'll be important for us to manage that tree properly. So that's kind of a feature tree that's kind of starting this. Then from there, we're gonna go into some some deciduous trees. So we've got a multi-stem pagoda dogwood, which is what I have growing at the end of the driveway. Uh, they get beautiful spring flowers, great fall color, and berries on them that the birds will eat. So this is great bird forage. Plus it's a beautiful multi-stem tree that's quite horizontal uh, as it ages. So it's a beautiful kind of layered tiered habit on that. We'll also there have a fire spire hornbeam. This is another native. This is Carpinus carolinii. Beautiful fall color. And this is more of a columnar upright habit. Then next to those, the evergreens that we're looking at there are actually another Norway spruce, if you can believe it. But this is Picea abies cupressina. And this is a columnar Norway spruce that is not supposed to get nearly as tall or wide as these just goliaths that we have in our yard here. And we're gonna plant three of those together. Those will get fairly tall, fairly quick. And by fairly tall, I mean they're gonna get 30 feet fairly quickly, um, but they should screen the cottage. So those three trees will be planted more or less in a triangle so that from a variety of angles, you're getting the screening we need. Now there is also a very large pine tree between us and where the cottage is gonna go. So the upper parts of that cottage, so for our upstairs and stuff, will be screened. Next to that, we've got Cornus moss. This is a Cornelian cherry dogwood, not a native. I have uh, one of those and I have a Golden Glory, which is a cultivar of that, which is a little bit more narrow. This is the straight species, which will get wide like that Pagoda dogwood. Very first thing to show color in this area in spring. Uh, just a beautiful, lovely tree. They do get um, little droops, berry, they're droops, but they kind of look like berries on them as well. Ours hasn't done that yet that we have now, but in time they will have that as well, which will also serve as uh, bird forage. Another fire spire hornbeam in that same area. 
then we're gonna move down and and I'm hoping to put in a little grouping of three camisiparis. So this would be hopefully soft serve is the one I'm trying to get. Everything I'm talking about here, we're buying big trees. Uh, this is important to get this going quickly. We are buying the biggest ones we can find basically in most of these cases. And uh, I can't find anything uh, so far for the camisiparis. So we might have to swap that out. It's the only thing I don't have ordered that I've told you about so far. Those are gonna get eight. 10 feet tall in time. Uh, so this is more of like a, a low ground screening than it is high screening because once we're at this point, there's no buildings or anything we need to screen as we get farther this way. It's just a matter of ground level screening for some privacy from the cars that are gonna be parked in there, etc. Next up is a tree that I'm very happy to have found an excuse to plant, which is a Swiss stone pine. Very cool. Now I had to get a cultivar called Twister. I was trying to get one called Tip Top. It was sold out. Twister is very similar. It's got little twisty needles. This is actually the tree that pine nuts come from. One of them will never have pine nuts. It takes forever for that to happen on a tree uh, and the squirrels will get them before we get them. But it's, it's fun to say that. These are beautiful, beautiful evergreen trees and I'm happy to have the opportunity to plant one. And if there is an investment tree, in what I'm telling you here, it's that Swiss stone pine. Um, then we have another fire spire hydrangea, another pagoda dogwood, and then we're on to the maple. So in between all these things are shrubs. So our shrub layer is going to consist of things like winterberry, um, which will bring us great winter color, also stems to cut, uh, dervilla, which I actually have written on here, Dutzia, it's not Dutzia, it's Dervilla, uh, which is the bush honeysuckle that is also a native. And I like that plant because it grows basically anywhere. So we can plant that throughout this, which is gonna range from kind of shady to sunnier. And we can plant that throughout the whole thing to add continuity without worrying too much about that. Also Clethra. Uh, ever since I saw Clethra growing at the Spring Meadows uh, display gardens last spring, when it was still fully dead, unpruned, dried up, I knew I had to have that because it was so gorgeous dead at the end of the season or all dried up and brown with all its flowers just left there in brown i was like if it looks this good now we gotta have that so lots of clethora and then also we're going to add in uh believe it or not a few boxwoods as well and you're probably wondering aren't you the person with the boxwood blight what are you doing well i am planning on adding in some of the new blight resistant boxwood um, that are coming from a company called Better Boxwood. We will not be like formally pruning these or anything. It's just a nice broadleaf evergreen to add some more screening. And then I think we're also going to put in some like red twig dogwood or something like that too to get some more winter interest in there and just kind of bulk up that bottom layer. We also want this to be uh, really bird friendly and wildlife friendly. So uh, there will be great forage and nesting and everything else and bugs, great insects will be attracted to these plants. Uh, so there should be a lot of wildlife activity in there. But more than anything, I think that this looks appropriate for the area. And it also is an opportunity to incorporate what I think are some very cool plants. Um, also, everything here, pretty much low maintenance, right? Um, obviously there's going to be the watering requirements of this for the first this year for sure probably next year are going to be enormous I will be spending a lot of time standing over there with a hose watering things everything that's plant that's going in there is deer resistant uh, based primarily on I often use uh, Rutgers University um, they have a list of deer resistance so they sort of rate deer resistance on um, now listen do I trust the deer hell no so I'm going to be spraying these plants I mean one thing I have really found that took me far too long to realize was that plants develop deer resistance and and whether that means that there's actually something that happens in the plant I kind of don't think that's it because we would know that, right? I mean, obviously, as they grow, soft new growth hardens off. So there's less tasty bits for deer to eat. I just think it's more about training deer, honestly. I mean, I think a deer sees a new plant in your yards are like, yum, let's go eat that. So I will be spraying these. Um, my goal is to not have to do a physical barrier on these in winter, but just keep up with the spraying on these for at least the first couple of years. And that's a price I'm willing to pay. I have no problem with that. So here's the update on where this project is now. The trees are coming down probably in the next few weeks. The stumps will be removed. 
I have ordered, like I said, all of the new trees except for the camisiparis, mostly because these are all field grown and the window for digging field grown trees is quite small. So if you want a field grown tree, um, you got to order it. <laughs> so you order it uh, and so it will get dug in a field, balled and burlapped and shipped to us shortly after it's dug out of the field. So I'm not worried about ground covers or any of that this year. The goal this year is to get this project done, get these trees and these shrubs planted, spend my entire summer standing over there watering things or hook up some sort of perhaps I'll hook up some sort of watering system that we can just connect a hose to. I'll have to figure that out. But babying these trees because it's all about protecting the investment. And this is not just an investment in money, which is um, significant. This is financially, this is the biggest project we've ever done. But also it is protecting the investment of time because with any privacy screen, the goal is we want the privacy now. But what we learned from this is that where is the balance between privacy now and totally overgrown later? Okay, I think this video is plenty long enough, but this is a project I've been eager to tell you about for a long time, but I've been waiting for the right opportunity with more details to share with you. Now, if you have questions, go ahead and ask them and I will probably try to answer them in one of our weekly Q&A videos. I am excited about this project. Uh, it's a little nerve wracking. I'm not, it's gonna be a really big change. I think it's gonna be a change for the better and so does everybody else involved in this. So you're gonna wanna see this all happening. So if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button because if you've made it this far, you're invested enough in this project that you wanna see what happens next. And of course, we'll be updating all this and we'll talk about the hows and the whys and all those things in the future. Um, but for now, that's the big project that I've been sort of teasing up for several months now. All right, that's it guys. The sky is blue, the sun is high.